Welcome to the Rock Coding YouTube channel. My name is Anton and today we're going to be taking a look at changes that are coming to ASP.NET Core in the .NET 8 update. David Fowler has been tweeting about them. We have some bearer stuff. We have some changes to identity. The bottom line is if you don't want to have a UI and you just want to have an API that is dealing out some kind of token to authenticate with, that is becoming a lot more easier. Don't forget, if you're enjoying the content, leave a like and subscribe. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. Don't forget to check out the description, follow me on Twitter, and let's go ahead and get started. Here I have a very simple ASP.NET Core application. We are in version eight, and these packages are what I'm gonna add a little bit later to demonstrate some new functionality. We have an index HTML page, again, to just demonstrate a couple of things, and then we have a program CS. If I ever do ASP.NET Core authentication videos, this is basically the minimal setup. We're adding authentication, we're adding the cookie schema, and then we work from there. You know, we got authorization, we know the middleware is added automatically, we get an endpoint to just see the user, we have a secret endpoint, and then we want to be able to log in. The application is running, uh, let's go ahead and check this out. So this is how this usually works. I go ahead and log in. I take a look at the session. Somewhere in the response, we're gonna get a cookie. We know this cookie is getting stored in the browser. And now we can go ahead and access the secret endpoint. If I remove the cookie, we refresh the secret endpoint. You are gonna have to go and log in. And this is one of the most annoying things that currently happens if you're building an API and you have an authorized endpoint is you're gonna get redirected to the login screen even if you're using an HTTP client like the Fetch API or something like that, you're not necessarily navigating to a page, right? And the only way to disable that functionality is you need to be aware of some headers that you need to attach to your request. and. How do you know about those headers? Well, you either decompile the source code or you need to take a look at the fine print in the documentation. So that's the situation that we're currently in. What is actually changing? If we go ahead and duplicate add cookie, we're just gonna comment this out. We're gonna take add cookie and instead we will specify add bearer token. We're not gonna change anything else. We're gonna restart our application. We're gonna come back and first of all, Let's check out the experience where we just hit secret. You no longer get redirected, you get a 401 as you should, right? And then if we log in, you no longer get something in the response header, you just get a token in the response body, right? So we can see it here. I'm not sure why I'm showing it to you here, but let's go ahead and close that. So you got the access token and now for my demonstration purposes, this is not very convenient, but I'm gonna go ahead and type out this fetch request uh, to the secret endpoint. So uh, secret and then this configuration, headers, you gotta have an authorization header, then you they do bearer token, slap this on here. Uh, I don't have the response there, but yeah. Uh, this request has gone through and we can see secret. So you just attach the token, as a bearer token to the authorization header and um, you're authenticated. And for people to not get the wrong idea, uh, this token over here is not a JWT token, it's just a, your user session encrypted in a string, same as the cookie. The only difference between this and the cookie, the cookie is managed automatically by the browser and is attached to, at, automatically to the requests. Here, with the token, you're gonna have to do everything manually. The downsides for using the token in the browser is that you're gonna have to use local storage. You can't use cookie storage, which is less secure, right? You're not gonna be vulnerable to cross-site request forgery, but if your application is vulnerable to cross-site scripting, JavaScript will be able to lift up your token and send it somewhere else. You can't do that with a cookie. Cookies are actually a little bit more secure in the browser, so, I would not recommend using this for the browser, even though that this looks convenient. For native applications where I don't really develop in that space, but I hear that their HTTP clients are all messed up, perhaps this is going to be the easier option. Let's come back to the application and let's take a look at some additional changes which are coming around to making your API authentication just that little bit better. We're gonna add these packages in. And as you can see here from the identity package, these changes are tied to the identity framework in ASP.NET Core. So let's see what this looks like. 
First of all, let's go ahead and add a DB context. I'm not going to be creating any of my own DB contexts. We're just going to use uh, the, the default identity DB context and we're going to register it with the identity user. For the options, we have using memory database and we'll just specify DB. Now for when we're registering identity, we're going to add identity core. The reason you want to add identity core and not identity, well, you can register identity. And actually, this would be a little bit uh, cool to see. Let's say you have the current identity set up, what it's going to look like, can you extend your current solution, right? So we add identity, we have identity user and identity role, we add entity framework stores. Uh, let's go ahead and copy the type. If you're watching my videos, you know that under the hood, add identity will add authentication with all the relevant schemas and this identity application schema is what's really going to be doing well <laughs> your authentication instead of registering your custom add bearer token you get add identity bearer token and in here you specify your user it doesn't actually do anything with the user under the hood all it's doing is registering your bearer token with the same configuration that you can specify on this call right this really is just uh, the same one liner that we have been specifying over here all it's doing is adding this better schema over here. And now instead of specifying our own authentication schema on this login endpoint, we would have to do this. I'm going to duplicate this endpoint. I'm going to say that one authentication endpoint is for cookies. And I'm going to go into add identity down here where it's identity constants application schema. So with this, I'm essentially enabling authentication for both authentication with cookies and authentication with the bearer token when I'm using identity. So this is how you can currently extend your identity solution to allow bearer token authentication. Uh, the samples that David Fowler is uh, showing on Twitter, he's using add identity core. If you look under the hood, it doesn't add any authentication schemas. So if you're rolling with add identity core, you will need to add identity cookie for cookie authentication and identity bearer token if you want to enable just the bearer token authentication. So we'll leave identity core over there. We have identity. We're hooking it up with the DB context. Uh, we're not using it for too much. It's just that if we don't do this, it's going to explode because we don't have a user store. We're not really using a user store at this point. So uh, the application is running. If we attempt to log in, we can still get a token and we will be able to authenticate with that token. So let's just double check. And obviously I just lied and this just has to do with when we're registering add identity, the default authentication schema is the cookie authentication schema. I'm not going to go through configuring the authorization and stuff like that to make this endpoint available for both authentication schemas. Just know that currently that is the reason that it's breaking. If we then go to login with cookie, in the network tab, if we take a look at the login with cookie, the, we get the cookie and because this is the default authentication schema, we're going to be able to reach secret. So this is kind of like the bare bones solution where you can just extend your current solution to start dealing out bearer tokens, because what you're going to have is you're going to have a sign in manager for your identity user. And on here, you're going to have something like sign in async where you're going to be able to pass authentication properties with the authentication schema or the authentication method, which is also the authentication schema. So you get the user, you check the password, and then you use the sign in manager to sign in with the appropriate schema and then the appropriate authentication token, whether it be a cookie or a bearer token will be returned in the response. All right. So that is how you can start dealing out this new shiny bearer token. Now, on to a little bit more of a controversial topic for myself is this add API endpoints. And what this is going to give you is map identity API. Again, you pass the identity user into here. And this allows you to just get rid of your login endpoints. And what you get is after the application restarts, let's say, yeah, the current user is Anton, and that is because I have a cookie. So let's just quickly get rid of the cookie. Uh, you have a register endpoint, which is a post endpoint, and I'm not going to be able to reach it unless I actually post something in the console. So let me just type out the request real quick. 
I'll make this a little bit bigger. Uh, here's a fetch to the register endpoint. It's a post and I'm posting JSON and it's a username of Anton and password. Uh, let's post this. I'm gonna get a response. Internally, this is going to use the identity DB context that I have to create the user in the database. And how that happens, we'll take a look at it in just a second. The next thing is to log in. So here I have a login call. Again, it's a post, we're posting JSON and it's a password. On the registration, you don't get anything back, right? So if we take a look at the response, nothing is here. Let's go ahead and log in. So that is successful. We're going to go to the network tab, the login request, and here we have the bearer token. You can use the API to actually deal out cookies. So you can say cookie mode, true. And now if we take a look at the network call, the response to this, we don't have anything in the body, but if we take a look at the headers, the request headers, and I know I'm dealing with quite a little real estate here, but here is the cookie that represents your authentication session. So you can use your API to deal out tokens and you can use your API to deal out cookies. Some of the questions that you may get is, how do I know that the register endpoint exists? How do I know that the login endpoint exists? How do I know about the cookie mode flag? Well, this is the part where I said this, this may be questionable is when I encountered this type of solution when I was trying out Spring Boot. And that was very confusing because you're essentially flying blind. It's cool if you went ahead and built those endpoints and you just know it. But when you don't see the code, when you don't see the model that you're posting, uh, you kind of just have to trust that and this is as much as you're posting and you don't really see the boundaries, right? You don't understand what box you're in. So with ASP.NET Core, this was actually really good. So map identity, uh, how does it work? I opened it up. Oh, here are the endpoints. So I know there is a register endpoint. I know there is a login endpoint and there is actually a refresh endpoint to which I can post a refresh request. What is a refresh request? It just contains a refresh token. So this is how easy it is to find out what kind of endpoints you're registering and what are they actually doing? The problem with this solution is it is very good to basically just stand up basic authentication. Again, this is not production. Maybe they're going to add more endpoints into here. But let's say you want your register endpoint to actually authenticate you, right? You don't want to get redirected to the login screen. You just want to sign in straight away. This is not doing it for you. What's the solution to enabling that kind of sign in process? Uh, what do you do? Do you specify the options over here or do you go to API endpoints? You say, oh, I want my configuration. I want uh, sign in uh, on uh, re register, uh, you know, uh, whatever spelling uh, true, right? Do you say uh, some kind of uh, other option, uh, a new strategy for doing some kind of other flow, or then you're going to have um, events uh, that are, you know, whatever, supply a lambda. Uh, do you really want that where, you know, uh, in here, the method is, let's say, I don't know, 55 to 42, 10 lines of code you're going to have to learn about all of the if statements, all of the essentially switches, events, handlers to configure them over here. Or you can learn about the framework and write the 10 lines of code yourself and have the power to customize it as you want. Again, maybe the point for this is to just get up and running as fast as possible. But these endpoints are something that you can write yourself today. And this refresh endpoint is particularly interesting. When I was looking at the add bear token solution at the beginning, uh, when we had this enabled, because I, op well, I opened it up, I was like, all right, we get in the response, we get a token and a refresh token. How do we use the refresh token, right? Uh, does, is this going to do the same thing add auth is doing with the callback endpoint, right? If you watch my videos, you know, in add auth, if we open it up and we take a look at the add auth handler on the remote authentication handler, the class that it inherits from, there is actually a should handle request function, which checks if the 
callback path uh, equals to the request path, right? So there is a background check, which checks if the request is uh, some kind of request that you should intercept. And if it is one, it goes ahead and handles it. So when I was opening up the um, add bear token authentication in here, bear token, when I took a look at what this inherits from, which is essentially almost the same as the cookie authentication handler, I was surprised to see that it doesn't handle the token. It doesn't have that route redirection or handling the route. I was expecting it to see there from how the add all solution looks like, but it's not there. So if you just add add bear token, you're not going to be able to use the refresh token. The refresh token will only be able to be used over here. Another limitation that we see with the map API endpoints is that it's using from body for both registration and login endpoints. If you want to post a form, which is not maybe not even really a problem because uh, you can import the razor pages package with the controllers and stuff like that, right? Uh, if you're still posting uh, login and registration forms, uh, just know you're not going to be able to do this, right? So may or may not be a problem for you. And perhaps this is not designed for that kind of functionality. And speaking of limitations, limitations is all that you're going to find because currently this solution is not really configurable and it allows you to do just what is written in here. Create a user and then sign in as a user and get back a token or a cookie. Perhaps that is all that you're ever going to need and your code will be one line instead of a couple lines. Chances are you're gonna wanna add external authentication depending what industry you work in, perhaps audit logs, etc. My opinion for these kinds of things is it should belong in a library. Let me actually come full screen for this rant, kind of like the same as the C sharp programming language is just getting bloated with features. They are not really well, they are adding some uh, new stuff, but generally for the general population, shorter syntax, just more ways to write the same thing, maybe a little bit more succinctly. You get the picture, nothing really new, but we're getting more and more features. The language is getting bloated with the framework. I really believe this sort of stuff needs to be a library, have a solid base. Identity framework has so many tools, password hashers. People just don't know about it just because they've been taught in the documentation to use the cookie cutter solution of identity framework add the service add these endpoints or heck even just download this razor library. You are forced into using jQuery bootstrap, whatnot. Hopefully my stance on this is clear. I don't dislike the feature. I think it's all right. It's a 20% feature that covers 80% of the use cases as long as it gets to the balance. Uh, currently, I don't think it does that, I, but it, more, more endpoints need to be added there and perhaps some minimal configuration where you can control things like, can I sign in on register? And this is going to be a balancing act. I hope Microsoft gets it right. My personal view is this sort of thing should be a package and really Microsoft and the ASP.NET Core team should be promoting the underlying tools that they've used to build this sort of service. Because again, well, let's actually take a look at this. If we open up map identity and we take a look at the login endpoint, the endpoint is surfacing a I user claims principle factory. 99% of ASP.NET Core programmers don't even know what the service is, how it got in there and th that it actually exists. So uh, this could be very good to explore the code or get an idea for how to build your own solution. But if you're not teaching these underlying tools, the developers are going to be right back at square one, figuring out, well, I have this use case that I got to cover. Uh, the map identity API endpoint isn't helping me. What do I do? You would search YouTube or ASP.NET Core authentication and you would find my channel. So if you would like more ASP.NET Core content and authentication content, go ahead and subscribe. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comment section. Don't forget to check out the description. I have a C Sharp course that is out. If you would like to know C Sharp as I do, I highly recommend you take a look at it. A very big and special thank you goes out to all of my Patreon supporters. You help me make these videos. If you would like the source code for this video, as well as my other videos, come support me on Patreon. As always, thank you for watching and have a good day.